Welcome to my tutorial on building APIs with Apex REST services. Now we've been building these services for a couple weeks now at CloudsBugs and uh, I think we have some best practices to share and give you the idea of what we're building, how we're building it, and actually show you some code. So the first you want to do when you start building Apex REST services is you want to go ahead and get a new developer org. Now the developer orgs now are automatically enabled with Apex REST services so you can get started right away. Just go to developer.force.com and sign up for that. You also want to check out developer.force.com slash REST, and that's all capital letters, and that has all the documentation on the REST API. So there's, there's code snippets, there's articles, there's webinars you can watch. You also want to make sure you go to the uh, discussion board, <clears throat> and all the PMs for the REST API are on the discussion board. It's a really great way to get your questions answered quickly. Then be sure also to check out the documentation that they have on the APIs too. Next, I would highly recommend you go and look at a blog post by Apogee called RESTful API Design, Teach a Dog to Rest. This is a great architectural overview of how they think you should write APIs that are, you use a RESTful state architecture. Um, we've been using this quite a bit. Um, we think it's a great way to do it, and we really like their methodology. So I'd highly recommend you look at that. So let's look at what we're actually going to be building here. So we have a, um, we're building a member service for CloudSpokes. And we want it to have four features or four functionality. We want it to be able to, when people go to slash members, we want it to return a collection of S objects. This is going to be a get verb, so they would say get members. And it's going to have features where they can return, um, based on the query string parameters, a bunch of different things. So they can say, I want to specify certain fields to be returned. I want to be able to have a limit of records to return. I want to be able to order the results by a certain field. And I also I included a simple search, so we thought maybe a great Function that would be to have people search by keyword for a username. So I can use a search parameter also. And then, of course, support any kind of combination of that. You know, search for Mike where limit equals five records return and order the results by email. So that's our return for a selection for a set of members. We also want to be able to get a specific member. So if I go to slash member slash Tim7, it's going to return a collection with a single S object for that, for that um, member. And again, we want to do them, be able to specify the fields to be returned also. We also need a way to create records in Salesforce. So if I do a post to slash members, it's going to take all the values that I, I passed over in the request parameters and use those to create records in Salesforce. Now, the great thing about Apex REST service is that I can do multiple things at one time. So one call can create, in this instance, it can create a new member and associated Salesforce.com user. Now, if I use just the REST API, I wouldn't be able to do that. I can only do a query or do like an, an, upsert or an insert statement. But with the Apex REST, I can package these multiple, um, basically multiple functions together in one call. That's where the real power of the uh, Apex REST service. And then I'm also, of course, going to want to update a member. So if I do a put request to slash member slash Tim7, it's going to update that member's record with all the data in the request parameters. All right, so let's see how, that's how we do that real quick here. So let's go ahead and look. So go back over here. One thing you want to do is you want to definitely look at the, uh, the Apigee console. They have a Salesforce console that you can use. And this is essentially your client application that you use when building these APIs. Um, you can, of course, write anything you want. If you want to write a Rails client or um, a Java console, that's, that's perfectly fine. But this is a great little tool. One of the best things about it is that it allows you to authorize with OAuth right here from this client. So you don't have to build that in your client app. So, for instance, I could go here and say authorize OAuth. It's going to have to log into Salesforce. I'm going to add my credentials. It's going to authorize me. And now, every time I make a request to Salesforce, it's going to go ahead and pass my, my OAuth token and form you automatically. You can also go here and select headers, and you can actually specify your OAuth token. But I think this is just a little bit more easy, a little easier. So let's see, so the, what you're going to need to do now is go ahead and I'm going to log in here with Salesforce. You're going to need to get the URL of your org you're, org you're going to be calling in your service. So I'm on this box right here. So we we're on the NA9 box. So I want this part of the query string, and I want to add that. And the rest of my query URL is always going to be um, services. Let's see. It's always going to be services slash apex rest. So it's always going to be that, and then the rest of the URL is going to be based on what your Apex class looks like. <clears throat> so let's go jump in the class real quick here. So here's my Apex class that I use for my members REST service. You can see it's called members REST service, and it's annotated with a REST resource, and it says URL mapping equals v9, v.9 slash members. 
So this is what I'm actually going to need here. One important thing also is that I've used the global with sharing keyword. So that basically says any request I make for a user is going to use that user's sharing rules and only serve them up records or give them access to records that they should have access to. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this part of my URL mapping. And this can be anything you want it to be. I'm going to paste that right in here. All right. So the first thing we want to do now is I want to go ahead and run my get command for members to return a collection of members. So I'm going to say get initial return a collection of members. All right, there we go. So we got our members back here. So I might want to say by default it returns back the name and the ID, but I might want to say I want I just want um, ID and an email. So I'll run that get and it returns back email and ID. So let's say but let's say I only want two records. We can say limit equals two. And I'll return two records for us. And then I may want to say uh, order by by name. Let me get that. Oops. Name. So there's that right there. But let's say I did have also had a search feature. So I want to say let's say username. Username or search equals. I use that, and that should bring back all these records that I have with the name of Jeff D. So you can see how it runs that like there. So let's see, now, now that I found this user right here, let's go ahead and actually do the uh, get command for a particular member. So we'll get this member right here, Jeff D in the mic, and we'll do a get, and that brings back just that member right there. And I'm upgrading, I want to say fields equals ID, ID, and let's say first, first name. Create exceptions because I get that wrong name and that's not on that field. So let's do name. Let's just do email. All right, so we got that there. Okay, so now what I want to do is I've got these members. I want to actually go ahead and create a new one. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, populate my headers with the data that I need real quick here. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I just add these in here. So I want to go ahead and add my parameters I want to pass in this section right here. So I like to use all lowercase because this Apex REST service is um, case sensitive and sometimes you may have problems if you start using you know, different cases. So I just added these fields in here. And so now I'm going to change this right here. I'm going to go to slash members again and now we're going to do a post. So I'll change this to post and this should go ahead and actually create a record in Salesforce. All right, so let's see. I had too many slash on there. So let's try this one more time. Now this should actually told me that the username already is already exists. So I actually had a duplicate username in there just to test that. So you can see the errors being thrown back from Salesforce. So let me go ahead and do the username. This should still throw an error back because my password's going to be wrong. So you can kind of see how the errors are popping back from Salesforce. So this is invalid new password. So that was a password that I got back from Salesforce saying that have the wrong, I have the wrong type of password. So let me put a number on here also. And now this should go ahead and successfully create, create a new, new record. All right, so there's my new record here. Now if I look at this in Salesforce, you'll see that here's my new record, my username, all the information, and it links me to a new user I just created in Salesforce. All right, so let's go look at the code for this stuff real quick here. So, so you can see the first part I got here. I did the uh, the get for a certain user. So here's the do get method, and it looks at everything past slash members. If it finds anything past it, it assumes that's going to be the username. So it basically says if the if the the username is not members, you know, which is the uh, which is the URL mapping it's going to assume that we want to get a certain member, so it's going to hand off that method to get member by passing the username. If there is not a username, it's just, if it's just slash members, it's going to call the get members method and return all the members. So let's go look at those real quick. So here's the get members. So you can see it passes the request there. It sets some parameters here, some default parameters. Then if they exist in the request, like the fields, the limit, the order by, and the username, 
it's going to add those to the query and it's going to run the database query method with that string and return the, those records. Now if we do the get member method, it's going to pass the username and the request. It's going to take the default ID and name fields and then if they specified a field a parameter with the field, it's going to add those instead, and then it's going to run the database query method with that circle string also, and return that that member. <clears throat> so let's go back. We just actually did um, we just created a user. Let's go back and update a user real quick. So we're going to get this user here again. So we did. Uh, let's see. Was this user right here, right there? So I'm going to go ahead and update this user. So hang on one second here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and update just the user's email address. So I just took all the parameters out. So now the only thing that's left is email address. And I'm going to change it. Right now it's my Gmail account. I'm going to change it to my Cloudsbooks account. So I'm going to go ahead and add those options. And since this is an update, I need to use a put method. And I need to actually put the user name in there also. All right, so this is going to go ahead and update Jeff D in the mic 20, and it's going to um, update the email address. So let's run that. All right, so now if we go back here, we should see that the email address is updated. All right, great. All right, so now let's look at the code for that real quick. So if we come through here, you can see that um, here's the post method, and the post method is what creates a new record. So it looks for the username after the slash members. Um, if it finds one, if it does not find that username, it goes ahead and creates a new member. If it does, it's going to go ahead and actually throw back invalid operation string. So you can look at the, that down here. So let's see, create, I think it's right here. So create, create member. So we add a new member. I get a list, of, a new member object. I get a list of all the fields in the member custom object. I set a save point for the database so I can roll back. I create a new user with some of the data that was passed. We also have support for third party like Twitter and GitHub. So if those keys are there, I can add those in there for log on. Then I go ahead and insert the user and then I populate the member object with all the values that were submitted in the request parameters, but I only allow it to add values for fields that are in the custom object. So maybe different fields that come across that aren't necessarily in that object. And then I go ahead and link this member record to my new ID, a new user that I just created, this ID, and then I insert the member. And then if they submit a password, um, I go ahead and create, create that password in Salesforce. If not, if they use something like Twitter or GitHub, I'm going to go ahead and just create a, a password for them real quick. And then uh, if we have any exceptions, I'm going to go ahead and catch any DML exceptions. I'm going to catch any regular exceptions and then roll everything back. And it's a very, very similar process with the, uh, with the update. So the update works almost the same way. I submit a username and the crest parameters. I get the, uh, the map of all the strings in the custom object. I also have a set of fields I don't want them to update. So I don't want them to update the username because once it's created, it's not going to be updatable. And then I try to go ahead and get the, uh, the member that they're trying to update. And then I, if that's successful, it adds the field, the data to the fields that they submitted in the request parameters, only if that field is actually on that custom object. And then we're going to go ahead and try to update that record. Now, if anything happens such as, you know, they specify an invalid member, I'm going to throw that an exception. Same thing for DML, then I'll catch any other exceptions and I'll pass that back. So, so there you go. So that is the, what we think is one of the best ways to create Apex REST services. I mean, I'm sure there's better ways to do it. This is going to work for us, and we think it's a good style based on what some of the other vendors are using for their APIs. So um, hope you enjoyed the, the, the demo, and if you have any questions, feel free to drop us a line.